Hey guys, Billy here. So as I was going through some of my things and packing for my first big race of the upcoming season at Lake Sonoma, I thought it would be cool to kind of share with you guys some of my favorite running items, my uh, my running essentials, if you will, right now. These are usually things that I typically don't do a run without, or if I'm going to do a long run, they will almost certainly be a part of my run. Now, one thing I won't be addressing in this video is footwear. I know everybody is obsessed with shoes, what's on your feet. Footwear is something that changes so frequently, and I want this to be a little more like evergreen content, something that will continue to bring people value. Uh, 6, 12, 18 months down the line. Now, before we begin, uh, I just want to clarify that I was not paid by any of these guys to endorse their products. Again, th these are just things that I personally like to use that brings me a lot of value and thus hopefully will bring you guys some value by sharing some of my knowledge. So without further ado, here are my top five favorite running related items. Let's go. Okay, the first product I wanna talk about is a gel, specifically by Spring Energy. Even more specifically, the Canterbury flavor. I think it was ultra elite athlete Kelly Wolf who first gave me a sample of this, of this particular gel, and I tasted it, and it just tasted amazing. And I don't know how many gels you can say that about, but um, I can't imagine taking this for hours on end and ever getting sick of the taste. Spring's uh, Canterbury. Probably the best tasting gel out in the market right now. So good. Have you out to that though? I have not yet used this in an ultra endurance event, so um, I can't quite vouch for that. But me personally, I have a pretty solid stomach, and again, the taste is out of this world. So I can definitely, definitely vouch for that. It has 100 calories. Um, uses real natural ingredients like organic basmati rice, organic banana maple syrup, coconut water, you get the idea. Just real whole foods, which I think many people will appreciate. Minor gripe though is in the packaging. When you, when you rip this, it was actually designed to hold the top part, the top piece, um, so that you don't have two separate items to throw away when you're done consuming it. But it is very easy to rip all the way through. Therefore, instead of it dangling, uh, it will become two pieces. But again, all in all, a great tasting gel. Okay, item number two, and I should say really items, that would be the Path Baseliner and Path Shorts. So a couple of reasons why they prefer to separate the Baseliner from their shorts, which I didn't really understand initially. What enables the runner to do is you can have several of these base liners and they come in different lengths. So for colder weather, you can potentially wear longer base liners. And secondly, if you think about it, most shorts come with the, with the base liner sewn into the shorts. But really what that does is that they kind of move uniformly. And I think that in turn causes a lot more friction, especially when you weigh down your shorts with things in the pockets. And if it moves at the same time, I think it just, creates more opportunities for your nether regions to chafe and separating them really creates, um, I guess as a car analogy, like an independent suspension so that you know when your shorts are bouncing around, Lord knows how many times during a race, your baseliner will stay put. So I really dig that. When it comes to the shorts, I think I prefer the Graves because they're super lightweight, they're super breathable, but really, I mean, both of their shorts work out really well and both shorts have Really nice pocket placements for your iPhone, a bunch of gels if you want, key fobs. What I will do also to lessen my laundry load is that I'll typically go through one, maybe two pairs of shorts during a week and have about two or three base liners that I will actually, you know, at the end of a run, rinse off in the sinks, hang to dry, and then rotate the base liners and just wear the same shorts. And that cuts down on my laundry big time. Okay, item number three, and that would be this guy right here. See how small that packs down? That is a Patagonia Houdini wind chill. And really, I have nothing but great things to say about this, especially winter time, fall, um, even early spring. These things are game changers. Because they pack down so small and because they're so light, you can carry these on runs. 
You know, you ever have that morning where you're in the warm car and it's early in the morning and you're really dreading stepping out and that first mile when you're gonna be cold? Well, I can't tell you how many times I've started a run with this on and for the first mile and probably not even until a mile, I end up shedding this because I've thoroughly warmed up, but because these guys pack down so small, I can just shed it, you know, a half mile in, three quarters of a mile in and carry it with me and it's not this burdensome thing. But again, whether it's that first mile of a early morning run or whether you're going up to a mountain where it's considerably warmer at the base of that mountain, these things are game changers. I've been wearing these, I've been using these for quite a while now. And, um, you know, they're not cheap. I think they retail right around $100, if not a little bit lower but they're Patagonia products. So I had an instance where the zipper broke on this exact Houdini, sent it in after a couple of weeks, it came back to me fixed at no charge to me. And this is a lifetime guarantee by Patagonia, which is great. Okay, item number four, and I'm actually wearing that item right now. And that is this right here, the Coros Apex GPS watch. I mean, really a lot to say about this, so I'll try to be somewhat brief in going through everything. First of all, it's super lightweight, and I think it's considerably smaller than most of the GPS watches like Suunto and Garmin out there. But as many of you guys may have heard, with a considerably longer battery life, it's really, truly remarkable how much oomph they put into this tiny GPS watch. I haven't quite tested it out for a long ultra marathon yet, but from what I hear, these guys will make it through the entire 100 and then some, uh, which is really cool. And also, I, I love the customization aspect of this. I love how versatile this is. You know, one of the things that I'm looking for when buying a GPS watch is the ability to wear it in a casual location without some big clunky thing. Like I want it to look like a watch and I want it to be stylish. And the versatility aspect of it, this is a band that I bought on the Coral's website for like 20 or 30 bucks. Um, it initially came in all black, but they're also super easy to change out. If you want to go all black band, if you want to go all green band like I'm wearing, or there's orange and a few other options. And I dig that. Now getting into the weeds a little bit more, the intuitiveness of the app. The Corals app allows you to do a lot of cool things like customize your watch face, customize the uh, GPS reading when it's actually in run mode or biking mode or swim mode, however you have it, you can customize exactly how you want the screen to read what data points you want it to display and you can easily toggle from screen to screen as it's in GPS mode by using this little knob on the side. And then, you know, the connection speed once a run is done to Strava is like, boom, right there. Um, as soon as you finish an exercise, it goes to the Coros app, I believe, and then right into the Strava app. So it's right there as soon as the run is done. I know there are a bunch of athletes out there giving out their codes. I don't have a 10% code to give out to you attached to me because again, I'm not financially motivated to do this. I'm just doing it because after several months of use, I really take into the product and I dig it, so there you go. Okay, finally, the last product. You may be wondering, how am I gonna carry all of this stuff? It can all be taken care of in this final product. That is the Naked Belt. Probably the one most consistent item that I will bring on, I think every single run that I go on from a three miler to a 23 miler, to a race, I have never been without this guy. There's a nice little hook on the inside of the pocket that you can quickly latch a key fob or a key chain on here, and it'll stay flush against your hip or your, you know, the front or your, the small of your back. And an iPhone, you know, for me, I carry a giant seven plus and tuck it right in the front and I pull it out with ease as I need it and it doesn't bounce. And then, you know, there's like the sometimes items. I'll sometimes bring a GoPro, sometimes have a Houdini jacket, some nutrition, and a soft flask water bottle that I'll tuck in the back. There's a rare items like the trekking poles. So that's what the silicone bands, which have gone through several different iterations, because trust me, I've had about two different versions prior to this, and I would say the Biggest improvement is in the silicone bands where you can hold the traditional fold down trekking poles in there. And I feel like the guys at Naked really, really nailed down the fit and the bands this time around. 
As far as the cons, you know, I would say it's both a blessing and a curse. So when you initially buy the band, there is a bit of it a trial and error because the sizing is so precise. If you look on their website, I think it initially started out with like a small, medium and large. And now they get very specific in the sizing. So you have to be careful for that. And another potential drawback, which, you know, doesn't really affect me. Maybe it's at mile 75, 100 mile race and you get a little bit lazy and so you you don't quite make it into the pocket and you miss that and it goes between the two bands and you know slides out but that's just something that you have to be careful for um, i don't know if the guys on naked have come up with a solution maybe like a two color system to really distinguish the two i don't know but yeah other than those couple of minor cribes this is probably one of my favorite running products that i use almost all the time and uh, once you get it dialed in, it's a super useful tool. A couple of honorable items that didn't quite make the list. To those of you who have asked me, what is in that squat brown bottle that you consume at your 100 mile races? It is a Bundaberg ginger beer. It's an easy way to get some carbonation, calories, and of course some ginger into your stomach to settle your stomach down, hopefully. No, it is not a magic elixir, but for me, because of those three components, I use it. And plus it tastes great. So there you go, Bundaberg ginger beer, that's what's in the bottle. One last honorable mention, I will say is the Ultimate Direction UD rain jacket. Fortunately for me, I don't really have to deal with the rain too much, but when we did have spells of some really intense rain here in Southern California, these guys came in handy. I thought it was really thoughtfully designed from the little pockets that you can pull out of the sleeves to keep your fingertips warm if you're missing gloves. And this really helped me out when I had some cotton gloves that got soaked and got really, really cold and my fingers started to get numb. And so I actually ended up discarding the gloves and using those little finger holds. And uh, also the brim of the hood, which was really cool, gave you a little bit of a breathing room so that the rain isn't directly falling on your face. And the bill of the hood really like stayed in place really, really well. So that was really useful. So when you are dealing with some stormy conditions, I highly recommend this really lightweight ultimate direction jacket. I guess my only minor gripe about this is, is that it doesn't really pack down that small or at least as neatly as a, um, as a Patagonia Houdini with a zipper and everything. But in all other aspects, I think this is a really great tool for dealing with rain while you're out there on the trails or on the roads. So there you have it, you guys. Those are the five items that I personally enjoy using when I'm out there running, either on the road or on trails. And you'll probably see somewhat of a consistent theme in some of these items and that, you know, a lot of this is like really pared down, uh, more of a return to a minimal aesthetic when it comes to running. And that's because, you know, running's very simple. It's, I think we have a tendency with technology being what it is, and being consumers to really complicate things, but it really doesn't have to be. And with some of these items, it helps me return to more of that minimal mindset of you know shoes, shorts, a couple of items, and just hitting the road or hitting the trails. And that's really what it should be in my mind. So let me know in the comment section below if you have used some of these items, if there are other items that you would recommend. If you've had problems with any of these items, let me know that as well. Again, these are just my personal preferences, so I'm sharing that with you guys. Thanks for watching everybody. Until next time, happy trails and happy running.